What's up everybody? My name is Mark Shinaki and I own a 1968 Plymouth Fury. purchased the car in 2013. Just prior to that, I was at home watching car shows with my one of my sons. He was 10 or 11 at the time. And he looked over at me and said, Dad, why don't you do that? So I looked back and I said, are you going to help me? He said, yeah. I saw the car on Craigslist. It looks like it had all the parts and it runs and drives. Uh, so it was about 50 miles away and my oldest son said he wanted to go with me. He was probably 13 or 14 at the time. And uh, I, I took everything, all my tools, compressed air, you know, true roadkill style, try to bring everything I needed. So that if I had to do any roadside repairs, I could, I could make it home. Um, out of the, the 50 miles, I made it about four before the transmission went out on it. Uh, I was just kind of driving along, had to go up a hill and it wasn't doing it. And the more I gave it gas, the engine revved, but the transmission didn't put out any more power. The bands were just shot on it. So I had to call the seller and say, hey, I need you to pick me up. Good news is I'm not very far. And he uh, brought me back and I spent the entire day getting a trailer hauling the Fury back, taking the trailer back, and coming back home. But that left me with my first project, transmission rebuild. I'd never rebuilt a transmission before. I bought some books on it, but I still had questions. So I looked at YouTube, where I found a 16-part episode on how to rebuild a transmission. It was like a cooking show. I had my table laid out with all the parts on it. I had my laptop up and, and everything he did, I did. And I rebuilt the transmission and, and it worked. And I was very proud of that. You know, after that, it was a running and driving vehicle. It wasn't the safest, but it was running and driving. So I uh, redid the brakes. The brakes had drum drums all the way around. And when you would stop, it would you just weren't sure if it was going to stop straight or not. So converted them over to disc brakes and that was a huge improvement. Then uh, the following year I redid the four floor pans. So some of the floor pans had some, some rust holes in it. And with a Plymouth Fury, it's not like you can go to the parts store and, and or online and say, I want the entire floor pan for this vehicle. They just don't make it. So uh, I, bought sheet metal and borrowed some uh, roller dies from Kevin from hindsight and went to work and pretty much the entire winter was done. I had never welded before, but uh, I feel like I did a pretty good job and, and that I, again, was very proud of my progress. So welded in the new floor pans, grinded it to my liking, good enough kind of thing. There were no holes, seam sealed, uh, added new carpet, and then uh, while I was going through that, I actually took the the front and rear seats to a to an upholstery shop, 
Uh, that's pretty much the one thing that someone else has done on this car. So uh, I'm not an upholstery guy. That That is above and beyond my hand-eye coordination. Then two years ago, I started rebuilding an engine. So the car originally came with the 318, at least that's what the VIN tells me, but that was not the engine that was in the car. It had a 383 two barrel with the torque fly. So I purchased a bare block off of Craigslist, had the uh, cylinders bored 30 over, that purchased pistons, forged pistons, that already had a forged crank, and um, rebuilt a 440 over the winter with my father-in-law. So bought a, an Edelbrock top end kit, so RPM heads, um, intake manifold, and an ABS-2 uh, carburetor. Uh, about that time that I was rebuilding the engine, I went with the group from Hindsight to uh, the NSRA Street Rod Nationals in Louisville, Kentucky. And there were 10,000 cars there and it was, it was incredible. And Cam had taken his Roadrunner and drove it the 500 miles, a thousand miles round trip. And uh, on the way back then I was like, that is my goal. I want to drive the next year to Louisville with the Fury and the 440. So um, for several months, that is pretty much all I worked on was getting that engine ready, getting it rebuilt, uh, starting it on outside the car, then putting it in the car. I painted the firewall. Uh, I plan on painting the, the car like a copper color. There's a 2013 Dodge Daytona that color that I like, uh, I might change that just a bit to make it a little darker, but um, that's pretty much what this, going forward, this is gonna look like, so. Uh, and I made the journey to Louisville that following year, so uh, installed a convertible top. I didn't do the best job. Again, I'm not an upholstery guy, so I, I did my best and I ensured that I wasn't going to get rained on if uh, if it rained, but it works and it's okay. It's it's you know not show quality, but it's not a, going to be a show quality car. It's going to be a daily driver. So that's pretty much the update for now. Uh, I'm will do another video of a walk around of the car and talking about all the things that I would like to do to it, to change it. And the big thing is I would like to get this thing ready for paint. So my goal is to start doing some videos that are gonna show my progress of doing the body work and then uh, getting it ready for paint.